I use a five interval scale. There's almost an entire interval on the well-being scale. So if the average was four when they came in, it was now three. It was huge. Um, and of course, a lot of people don't drop at all. Some people even improved. We used a fairly tight tracking where you track the same individuals anonymously, but they, they're identified by code, so it's a very reliable measure. It's, we're not using means, we're using actual individuals and taking the individual changes and, and uh, computing them. That's how you get into journals these days. You can't do it the other way. Um, so that was enormous. Be, particularly when you think a lot of people weren't changing at all or were even improving a little bit. They loved law school. So the ones that were changing were really bringing the scale way down, <laughs> way down. So everything went wrong in law school, kind of what I suspected. Um, and one of the really things that we found disturbing that other people have written about in law review articles, but they didn't have numbers. And, and I never expected to find this in our little study, two law schools initially, was that the values shifted in the first year, somewhat in ways we didn't expect, and I won't go into too much detail. But then after that they stopped shifting, but in the second and third year all the valuing started going down. So the good values not only went down like they did in the first year, but the, bad, the unhealthy values also went down. People just stopped caring pretty much about everything. And these values uh, that we study are the things everybody, you know, these are, this is the real world that they're trying to study, what makes so. The values we're studying, how much do you value your own self, basically, who you are and improving yourself? How much do you value uh, being re relating to closely to other people? How much do you value communities of interest and building community? How much do you value helping people? Those are all the positive values. And we ask people, how much do you value uh, money? How much do you value luxuries? How much do you value being famous and looking good to other people? How much do you value impressing people? and having power over them. All the common values that would motivate people, they all went down. And I thought, wow, that's so strange. And then I realized, no, no. Think about that article, uh, Gulati's article with somebody else, uh, Sanders, uh, and another author, uh, about disengagement in the third year of law school, uh, enemy loss of interest and meaning. I always cite a Harvard Law article that was talking about how this happened at her law school, Harvard, where people come in excited about making a difference, doing something worthwhile. And even at Harvard, the creme de la creme, the students completely become deflated, according to her. I cite it in every article I have. She didn't have numbers. And that by third year, they were like the walking wounded, dispirited, demoralized. It's a really striking piece. It also came out at the same time as my first article, right around 99 or 2000. So um, all these things shifted and the valuing went down. So people were kind of becoming numb in a sense, on average, not everyone. Uh, and caring less about everything. Even the bad things that aren't good to care about, they cared about less and the good things. It's like they sort of stopped caring. And I realized I had seen that described in at least two or three other law review articles, including that Harvard article. And here it is. We have the numbers. It just is amazing when you do research with an open mind. You know, some of the stuff we were looking for we didn't find. And some of the stuff we never imagined we'd find showed up. And that was one of them. So that's the bad news. Uh, a little piece of good news in our study, unlike and this has been true now for subsequent studies twice. Um, unlike the Benjamin depression study, our overall look at well-being, once it took that big drop in the uh, first year, it didn't go down further, not meaningfully. It didn't rebound. Ken said, we need to check this out in the second, third year because these numbers are probably going to rebound. I remember as we were doing this first study, you know, 
I said, okay, you think so? It was kind of like his values don't change talk, okay? Because science will get you so far, but being in the environment where I've been for, you know, 11 or 12 years by now and having pretty good instincts, I guess, as it's turned out, I'm thinking, you know what, let's see if it rebounds. I don't think so, because these upper class students don't look any happier than the second year first termers. If anything, they're less interested in what's going on. And part of that's a natural, you know, you, you know, we all get cynical after we've done something for a while. There's a little bit of that. But it's good to know about it and we should contradict it because it really undermines learning and then the attitudes you take into practice. So, another story. But he, he, he wanted to check this out in the second and third years, mainly to make sure that it doesn't rebound or to see how much it rebounds. And it didn't rebound. Uh, we didn't really find it well-being going down more, the valuing did. Uh, so basically everything went wrong from a, an overall psychodynamic standpoint. Um, and in our latest second study we added needs, uh, that other foundation of well-being. Those weren't really established empirically yet when we did the first study. Ken was actually doing the major study on that at the same time. It's a multi-year study, just like ours was. And his needs study came out, which they did over two continents. They studied American needs and um, Korean needs because they wanted American uh, human needs, not just our culture or their culture. What really is universal to human beings? And it came out to be very consistent. And they were very close to what Maslow said. Very close. Even though they, they, these were not Maslow believers, this, this is a new theory called self-determination theory, which has turned out to be true and to continue to develop. So when we added the needs to the next study, the same thing happened, not only to well-being and all that, but also to the needs. When students came in with all their needs met to a very high level, and their needs <laughs> really crashed, uh, you know, by the time they graduated. They were not getting their needs met. So no wonder people get depressed, because these are the primary predictors of well-being, or the flip side, angst and depression, in human beings. It turns out law students and lawyers are human beings. So that what we found is in our legal populations, all of them, all of these principles of human life all applied very tightly to law students. So it, it was a good overall picture. Law students are just like people that all this research has been done on for 40 years. Indeed, when, as law students are going through law school, everything that people need to thrive is to one extent or another uh, paired away in law students for whatever reason. And so therefore you would predict that not only law students but also the lawyers that they become are going to have uh, issues with their sense of well-being, their sense of wholeness as a person, their sense of purpose, uh, their sense of that life is great. Life is wonderful and I'm so glad I'm doing what I'm doing. All that is requires healthy values, health, healthy motives, and, and a good level of need satisfaction in people. At the minimum, 